Welcome to Boise Paramotors. Um, today we're gonna show you how to put your paramotor together when it gets shipped to you. It's in this configuration right here. You can see there's a frame with a motor and the harness hooked up. And then we have cage pieces and we have a propeller. And then here we have the same paramotor put all together. So we're gonna go through the entire process. Some tools that you're gonna need is Allen wrench uh, five Allen wrench four, those are metric ones. Then um, ratchet for those wrenches, or if you just use manual one, that's fine too. Uh, you're gonna need a um, torque wrench. And if you have electric start, you're gonna be provided with a charger and a battery you're probably gonna buy on your own. So we're gonna start assembling this unit right after the intro. <music> Before we start putting paramotor together, we're going to talk about the tools that you're going to need first. You're going to need a 5 and 6 Allen wrenches, they're metric sizes, and ratchet if you're using this kind. You're going to need a 13 millimeter uh, wrench, you're going to need a torque wrench, and if you're having a dual start, your paramotor from Boise Paramotors will come with a charger but not with a battery. The battery that you want to use is the one with the DIN connectors and we use 11.1 uh, volt battery that it's uh, 2200 milliamp per hour. Okay, they are working really good, you can get 10 to 15 charges on that. Okay, so let's move to the paramotor. As we talked before, your paramotor is going to come in the main piece and then you're going to have cage pieces and uh, Propeller. This is a 130 centimeter propeller, e props, and then you're gonna come. Uh, you're gonna get some other goodies necessary for putting your paramotor together, and they're gonna be right here in this pocket. So I'm gonna just put camera a little bit off till I. Okay. So in this pocket, you're gonna have a charger, just like we talked. Okay. You're gonna have the propeller hub plate with a six metric screws for the propeller, okay? If you have Vitorazi, you're gonna have a Vitorazi manual disc. That's something that it's really important, even though it hasn't been changed since 2014. And you're gonna have, there's some straps for your APCO harness. And also you're gonna have uh, wrench. This wrench that I just pulled out goes with this piece and that's for uh, tensioning your uh, motor belt. Okay, and that's about it. So let's start putting this thing together. So first thing that you want to do is disconnect this hookup for your harness. Okay, that'll fall like that. And you want to install the arms. In this case, we're gonna have a swan arms. I already put the washers on the, those arms that will go like this. And so lots of people wonder why, is, especially new pilots, why is um, there this big spacer here and there's not such a thing on the other side? Well, um, it is for torque compensation. When you, when the propeller rotates, it'll create a torque that will try to twist you and uh, the manufacturers of paramotors compensate for that in different ways. In this case, Kangok just puts an offset on the right uh, weight shift arm. So to put the arm back together on your paramotor, you're gonna need a, a six millimeter Allen wrench and you're gonna need a 13 millimeter regular wrench. So if you can see here, we have just a, first a single flat washer, then the spring washer, and then a nut here. So we're going to pull this bolt out. For right now, I don't need this wrench. I can just pull it with my hand. Okay. 
I'm gonna pull this bolt out. I'm trying to keep washer and and uh, washers on the other side tight so it's easier to put them back but sometimes they slip okay and here we go just gonna turn it in and i'm gonna take my 13 millimeter wrench i put it right here and i'm gonna take my allen wrench and just keep twisting till it's really tight so nut on the other side is a locking nut which is really good because you do not want your nut on the other side to fall off um, now it's pretty tight and you just leave it like that and you check this should move freely but there shouldn't be much slack um, so after we put two of these arms together on the perimeter, I will show you how to put the cage together as well. Well, after we put the arms together, like it was described previously, now we're going to put the cage pieces. There is, on a classic, there is a four cage pieces. Rather than three, there's this footing right here. And that footing slides in and snaps into the bottom of the frame. I already installed that and one side of the cage on for the purpose of time. So when you get the side, the side cages on, they're going to have a sticker that says Kangook on it. And you want that on the top, not on the bottom. You don't want it like this. You want that Kangook to be on the top. First thing you're going to do is the bottom pieces, as you can see, they're a little squared. And they're squared on purpose so they fit really tight and this one is rounded so you can easier snap in so f yeah you can see it right the right there so first things first you're gonna first go with the squared ones you're gonna put them in and then right here you're gonna press and snap this one in okay now once you have that on the classic you have these velcros down right here that you're gonna have to use like this and tighten them because this is a double caged double hooped cage so you have to have these um, velcros to strengthen it once that's done on both sides there's these webbings right here that Kangook makes and on both sides you're gonna do undo them like this hoop them through and tighten them and so after you tighten them you're just gonna loop this back through here so that this belt doesn't go into the motor and melts and whatnot. You're just gonna pull it through here and like this. I leave it right there, okay? So we're gonna do that on the other side as well. And um, I'm gonna show you now how to put the top. So the top part, the top piece is gonna go, looks like this and is different than all other pieces. And you're just gonna put it here in this hole right here right there and then you're gonna snap these in on both sides so this will go like this you're gonna run the strap and tighten it and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side snap and tighten and now we have these velcro straps here, two on each side. We're gonna strap them. One. Two. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. 
right here on this half. So one thing that you might want to notice is so there is also webbing meant for your top part right here and it's the same principle so what are you gonna do is you're gonna take this webbing and go through back tighten it and again you don't want this to fly around so you're just gonna put it through the hole there and leave it like that first thing we're gonna do now after we put the cage together and checked all the straps is put the spark plug in there is a red protector right here that you can see to protect any derbits or or dust coming into the motor so you're just gonna take a pliers pull this out put the spark plug in and there's a crash washer in the spark plug so you're gonna have to tighten that by hand while it goes after it's tightened by hand you're gonna tighten it a little bit more and then just tighten it to crash that washer okay and right now you just put the spark plug cap till it snaps so that's ready so next thing we're going to do is we're gonna put the propeller on and this is a two-piece e-props propeller uh, your paramotor if you buy it from us comes mostly with a e-props propeller you're gonna snap them in together like this and you're gonna take the propeller protector put it right here and there's a six magnetic bolts that you're gonna take and you're just gonna drop them in these holes sometimes they have tough time going through and you might just have to work it a little bit but you're gonna put them on just like this See that one kind of has a tougher time going through. We're gonna put them in, and then we're just gonna put them here on the hub. You can you can see where they should align with the hub, and then you're just gonna start one or two of them. This could be a little bit painful, but once you start it a couple, that should hold until you grab a wrench. So this time you're using number five Allen wrench just to tighten them. This is six, let me grab five. Just to tighten them snug. And once they start catching and moving we are going to use a torque wrench okay so we have a torque wrench here it's set to eight newton meters and that's the torque that eprop suggests so what we're going to do is we're going to keep tightening in a star pattern so we want everything to be tight and then we're going to wait for a snap not snap of bolts of course just a click in a torque wrench so I'm going in a start pattern there that clicked that clicked that clicked that clicked that one clicked and that one clicked so your paramotor is right now ready to go and fly you put the cage together you put um, the propeller together now if you do have electric start um, when you receive your paramotor from Boise paramotors you're gonna have this little bag with a relay and a hookup 
these Dean hookups are directly for the battery. And so, as I noted before, this is the battery that you want to use, 2,200 uh, milliamps per hour and 11.1 volt. You're just gonna snap it right here. We made a little uh, easy connector there. You're gonna put it here in this bag. You're just going to snap this together. And when you're ready to start your motor, in order to start your motor, I'm just gonna show you, you need to press these two buttons together. If you press one at a time, it won't work. Back off a little bit. But propeller might move. If you press these two together, you can feel that the motor wants to start. Anyways, uh, once you have your paramotor put together, you need to brake in your engine according to the manual that is provided for you on the CD. If you have any questions, put down in the comment. Thank you for watching Boise Paramotors, Kangook, Sky. Love you guys.